Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at two heavens as one, as suggested by my supporters on Patreon, a 3-mana, three 3-4 three, legendary human samurai, saying if a creature attacking causes a triggered ability of a permanent we control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So our deck is filled with creatures that have various attack triggers, so that's most of the deck here as you'll see. Small section dedicated to some non-creature spells, including Paladin class, to maybe pump the team and tax the opponent for casting spells in our turn, We've got some nice cheap removal spells with Swords to Plowshares and Lightning Bolt, and then a 2 mana D Spark, Dire Tactics, Vanishing Verse, and Angrass Rampage. Arcane Signet is still too good not to include in most of these decks, and then Swiftfoot Boots can be a way to give other creatures haste, as well as maybe Protect or Commander, and Black Market Connections can be a great source of card advantage, can generate a treasure token as well as a shapeshifter each turn, and since we're an aggressive deck we don't care about the life loss too much. Then at 1 mana there's Frontliner to pump a creature when it attacks, Boros Elite when it reaches Battalion gets plus 2 plus 2, so that can also get doubled, Sentinel doesn't have an attack trigger but just a great 1 drop to include in pretty much any white deck, has a Marshal can make extra lifelinking soldier tokens, Selfless Savior here to protect our key creatures so we can play it early, and then Vicious Conquistador drains the opponent for 1, Bomat Courier can exile an extra card with our commander out to provide extra card advantage once we sacrifice it, Scorch Spitter deals 1 damage when it attacks, Attacks. and then the Tiefling Outcast is one of the many double team creatures in this deck, which is one of these arena only abilities, but it's still quite synergistic with our commander, as getting additional copies of any creature is great in a creature deck, and it also gets doubled by our commander. And in the case of the Outcast, the more copies we have in play, the more damage they can deal. And then at 2 mana, there's Selfless Samurai, similar to Selfless Savior, can protect one of our key creatures. Also has a bit of synergy with other Samurai attacking alone. But outside of the Selfless Samurai, I'm not including any of the Samurai from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty that synergize with a creature attacking alone. Since I don't want to be attacking with one creature, I want to be turning the entire team sideways as much as possible. Then we've got Soldiers of the Watch as another double team creature that can find another copy of itself and put it in hand. Thalia, great in a creature heavy strategy like this one, taxing all non creature spells. Siphoner can generate extra energy when it attacks and that way draw extra cards as well. The Marauder gets plus two power when it attacks, so can hit for five with our commander out. There's the Rabble Rouser as another double team creature. Mayhem Patrol can also pump a creature when it attacks. We've got the Firebrand to prevent a creature from blocking, so we can potentially prevent two creatures from blocking that. That way, Robber of the Rich gets to exile an extra card with our commander out. And then the Triumphant Adventure, this is the updated version, now has two power, can venture through the Lost Mine of Fandelver pretty quickly, for instance, if we get our commander going. And then at the Crop Captain can pump the entire team, so it can also synergize nicely with cards that generate tokens, like the Sky Knight Vanguard, which makes a 1-1 White Soldier that's tapped and attacking whenever the 1-2 Flyer attacks. Then moving on to 3 mana, of course we can also cast our commander, although most of the time I'm waiting to play my commander until maybe turn 4, turn 5, until I build up a bigger board, although every now and then we can also play it on turn 3. Then there's also Trusted Pegasus, could play a few more of these flyers that give another creature flying when they attack, but Pegasus is the best one as it hits for 2, and we're all about dealing the most amount of damage as possible. Then we've got Adlin, which is great too, as it will generate an extra 1-1 token, so it can get out of hand very quickly. Audacious Thief can draw extra cards when it attacks. Then the Citadel Agent is pretty good too, a 3-2 with haste, and then we can specialize it, and especially the red-white version says when it attacks we may discard our hand and draw two cards if we do other creatures we control get plus x plus x until end of turn, where x is the number of cards we've discarded this turn, so that can get out of hand very quickly indeed. Got the Bellows Breath Ogre as one of these alchemy cards with starting intensity. Bit of a strange mechanic, but basically every time we attack with it, it becomes better. So the first time we attack, it deals one damage to any target. Next time, it can deal two damage. So with our commander out, it triggers twice. And let's say it's the first time it's attacking, it can now deal one damage and two damage. So that's three total, and it gets out of hand very quickly if the opponent cannot answer it. Then Bolt Hound will pump the team and 2-2 uh, with haste, so it can represent a ton of surprise damage. Captain Lannery is awesome too, ramping us by making treasures when it attacks, so that can also get out of hand if we start doubling it. We've got Fable of the Mirror Breaker, a great card in any deck, and the Shaman token also generates treasure when it attacks, so synergizes with our commander. 
got Krenko, which is also quite nice if we get it going, getting extra plus one counters and then making an army of goblin tokens equal to its power whenever it attacks. The Blade Reforged can provide card advantage by exiling the top card and getting extra counters in the process. Squee can also make goblins when it attacks on a 2-2 with haste that we can replay out of the graveyard. And then the Marshal here, a 3-3, that also synergizes with the double team mechanic, so it can get extra copies of certain creatures going. At 4 mana we've got the Champions, another double team creature, 4-3 flyer that can give our creatures a boon, which is a way to enhance the next creature we play, either with a plus one counter, flying or lifelink counter on it, and with our commander out we can maybe enable double team twice to get several copies of champions in hand. Then the Inspiring Unicorn gives a team plus one plus one when it attacks, so it can maybe give plus two plus two with our commander out, also pumps itself, which is why I'm playing this over the red-white four drop from Dominaria. A war leader of 4-4 that makes a pair of 1-1 cat tokens with a lifelink whenever it attacks, and the cat tokens are also tapped and attacking. We've got Pact Weapon, which is a mythic rare equipment. To equip it, we simply discard a card, and as long as it's attached to a creature, we don't lose the game for having zero or less life, so it can be pretty annoying for some aggressive decks to deal with. And then whenever the equipped creature attacks, we get to draw a card and reveal it, and the creature gets plus X plus X until end of turn, and we lose X life, where X is that card's mana value. And of course, as long as it's equipped, even if we pay a bunch of life to the ability, we still don't lose the game. So that can also be a pretty fun way to draw extra cards. And then the Lina Wild Mage is also a fun one. If it attacks, can copy a creature, and it's not legendary, so can even copy itself. So that can also get out of hand with our commander out, especially if we get lucky and roll high numbers to keep making more and more tokens. Got the Hoarding Ogre, which can make treasure tokens when it attacks. Hellrider is an awesome finisher if we have a bit of a board built up, especially with a few tokens, as now each creature that's attacking deals one damage to the opponent, so that will also get doubled by our commander. We've got a Patron of Flames, a 4-3 haste, that when it attacks and eventually dies, can search up a number of cards equal to the number of flame counters that it had, so that can be a nice source of card advantage, stapled onto a 4-3 haste, which isn't too bad. And then Tectonic Giant can also provide card advantage by exiling the top two cards of our library, and we can choose one of them to play until the end of our next turn, and it can also deal three damage to each opponent when it attacks, so we get to choose one of the two modes, and then Thundering Raichu to put extra counters on our creatures and deal extra damage equal to the number of modified creatures. Then we've got a few more curve toppers with Drana at five mana. Can feel a little bit slow since it doesn't have haste, but it's quite powerful when you do get to attack with it, returning non-legendary creatures of the opponent's choice to the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. Chaos Baller is another awesome one if you ever get to double its triggers, gives you a ton of flexibility, all the way from a wiping the opponent's board to making additional treasure tokens for us so we can cast more spells or maybe refreshing our hand. And then a Goldspan Dragon doesn't need an introduction, can make a ton of extra mana. Arsonist can deal damage to opposing creatures and planeswalkers. And then there's Sky Sovereign to deal 3 when it enters or attacks. And finally, Atali Primal Storm can also provide extra card advantage from both players' libraries. And then the mana base is definitely one of the weak points of this deck, since we are a three-color deck, still trying to be aggressive, so ideally we curve out and we don't play any tapped lands, but sometimes we'll draw the wrong type of lands and we won't be able to curve out perfectly because of that, and we have some double white and double red requirements in the mana base as well, which doesn't help. So the mana base could definitely improve. If you feel like you want to add more dual lands to make the mana base more consistent, feel free to do so. It will just come at the cost of maybe not curving out perfectly every time. And then we've got a couple basics of course. We've got a Den of the Bugbear which also benefits from our commander's ability making an extra goblin token. The channel lands are always great interaction to have. And then all the untapped dual lands pretty much. So the pathway, the pain lands, we've got the fast lands in black white and red white. The shock lands of course another staple. And then the dual lands from Innistrad I like as well. And then I think that covers all the dual lands, and then a couple tri lands with a triome. Even though it's a tap land, it's good enough to include in a three color deck like this. Command Tower, of course, and then Fabled Passage as a fetch land. Crossroads can also be untapped if we're on the draw. And then the new mana confluence, even though it costs us a bit of life, still very useful if we want to curve out perfectly. So, yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the Augur of Agonies. So we have Crossroads, which is untapped on the draw, so that makes red mana. So yeah, just need a third land and we're in business. Probably kick things off with a Beaumont Courier. I 
and then turn two we can play Vanguard, which then sets up our Crop Captain to be more effective. Turn two Signet, always powerful. And I'll just take two here. So probably way to turn on playing our commander. Next turn can play Captain plus Savior. As our opponent keeps ramping with Archive. So it won't be able to exile that with Vanishing Verse, unfortunately. So do we still play Savior alongside Captain? I think so. And by emptying our hand more, we can maybe consider sacrificing Beaumont Courier at some point. Coveted Price can tutor up any card, although they wouldn't be able to cast it for free at least. They may get a counter spell for commanders, wash away if they can cast for single blue. Or they may get a sweeper for next turn that maybe gets around the indestructible from Selfless Savior. And I don't necessarily think this is lethal, but uh, let's go for it. That resolves. Move to combats. And this will give our attacking creatures an extra power, so first we want to make the extra tokens from Vanguard. Okay, go to damage. And yeah, looks like we got there anyways, so they may have gotten a sweeper, but we don't really care. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing five color shrines, so Thalia is one of our better cards. So I'm keeping this, even if we don't have the one drop to apply early pressure necessarily. And then turn three ogre. Can also be pretty nice if they present any early creatures. And uh, Captain Lannery is awesome too. We may still be able to cast Sky Sovereign despite the extra attacks. Alright, Chronicler they can play on too, so that's a good one. So Lannery versus Ogre. If I play Lannery, then I'm getting closer to casting a Sky Sovereign. Ogre can kill Chronicler next turn, although they could also put a Life's Origin in the way which I wouldn't necessarily be able to attack into until I guess I play my commander and then it would at least trade. So I think Captain Lannery dodges a bunch of awkwardness here. Just makes a bunch of mana and then next turn playing our commander generates more mana with Captain. Alright, opponent's got the Ancient Wars 2-2 first strike, so not a bad blocker here. Pegasus can also give the team flying, so we have options. If I were to attack with Thalia and they trade, then I can still play Sky Sovereign Kill Chronicler, which is pretty effective. So Thalia attacks, see if they trade. I imagine they will. Nope, opponent takes it. In that case, do we play Pegasus? Yeah, Pegasus seems nice. And then we can fly over for the rest of the game. Although playing Ogre to mow down their creatures is also an option. And there's Life's Origin, one mana left. Don't have to worry about the sword supply shares at least, so they may pay for their shrine to deal damage. Well, let's untap. And then, is it commander time? I think so. As tempting as it is to play a tally, this can give both my creatures flying, give me two treasure, and then I may as well pay a treasure here to pump Captain Lannery.
And then I can still play Ogre. And we'll see what they can come up with here. Commune for two mana is fine, so they don't have as much mana to work with now. And our opponent just found a land and concedes, so yeah, the early Thalia definitely did a ton of work here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Nicol Bolas, so God Pharaoh, so Grixis Control. So we're gonna need a fast start to have a chance, and this seems way too slow, missing white mana as well. This isn't very good either. Uh, boots to protect is nice, but no white mana to deploy my creatures in time. Take a mulligan, and this is much better. So maybe ditch Vanishing Verse, since there are artifacts early we won't be able to take out, neither can we take out Nicol Bolas. And play a turn one Sentinel, I want to say. And then turn two we can double spell Courier and Conquistador. Robber's not bad either. Still kind of like to get Courier going first, since I'm likely to discard my hand at some point. And on average I prefer drawing cards from my deck as opposed to the opponent's. So we get to draw off Signet. And then now Robber plus Smash. We're in trouble if our opponent has a board wipe here, but not much we can do about it. Guardian Idol, another ramp card. Can play our commander next turn and get a ton of triggers. Opponent passes, so they may have a counter spell here. So I can wait on playing commander and just play Pegasus and smash. I don't have to play Pegasus right now, but probably okay to play a land in case I do end up sacrificing courier. They may kill Robber of the Rich if they have spot removal. So now I could also play Guardian Idol. Opponent takes it. And yeah, Idol versus Pegasus is interesting. Kind of like Idol, that way if there is a sweeper I'll have a bit more mana to work with and I can cash in Courier for a few extra cards. Opponent's gonna kill Sentinel end of turn and pay for it. Sure. Five mana for a Chromatic Lantern. Take my draw step, play my land as soon as I can. And am I okay with Commander getting countered? Could also activate Den. Could also play Pegasus and then cash in Beaumont Courier. Maybe see what else we find of Robber first. Sure, I guess we'll attack. And our opponent's gonna Infernal Grasp Courier now. So if I sacrifice it, they don't lose two life. So what if I just let it resolve now, activate then? That may be the play, actually. Let them take a bunch of damage, attack. More damage on the way. And our opponent's at one. So it's not going to be too difficult to cross the finish line, even with our opponent resolving Nicol Bolas. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing a five-color Joda deck. Always scary, but being on the play helps, and we can curve out pretty well with soldiers into Adlin, and then maybe play our commander afterwards. Our mana's good, which is not always the case in this deck. Opponent starts with Once Upon a Time. Can smooth out their draw. As per Sentinel is also great, although I think I still play as Soldiers first for the added pressure. Can play Sentinel turn 4 alongside our commander maybe. It did seem like they missed on Once Upon a Time. So that's uh, pretty interesting. Okay, so play Adlin and attack. 
Does our opponent have some removal here? Doesn't look like it. Could also go for champions next turn instead. Although kind of like double spelling Sentinel and then doubling Adlan's pretty nice. Ooh, Dark Ritual, I see. For Golos, so probably have to get rid of that one. So I guess Rampage plus Sentinel to play. Alternatively, I can still play Champions and then Adlin would attack as a 5-powered creature, so would attack past Golos. Yeah, I can buy that as well. And then next turn we can double spell. Sure. So it'll eat to 1-1 one, one most likely. Uh oh, opponent jumping means there's a sweeper incoming. Survey instead, so opponent's ramping. So... How much damage do we have on the board? Has to be close to lethal. If we play our commander and now a bolt hound as an option as well. So if I play my commander, we get two Adlin triggers. I think bolt hound's still gonna be better for us. And then I can play an Esper Sentinel as well. Two pump Adlin. So this can get a plus one counter. Play Sentinel. And smash. So first get the token, then enable Bolt Hound. And yeah, this should be enough. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Ashnod, Flash Mechanist. So a black Sacrifice Artifact deck. My hand is not perfect. I can play Spitter on turn 2 of Crossroads, and then turn 3 Adeline's not bad. Although still trades for Ashnod, and we're pretty far from casting anything else. Take a mulligan. This seems better. Firebrand especially useful here to get past any blockers. And then Ogre can also kill their commander. Turn 1 Specimen. So not going for turn 1 Ashnod, it's interesting. Can play Firebrand. There's Ashnod on two. And yeah, let's play Ogre. Could attack, prevent Specimen from blocking, and then be okay if they want to trade for Ashnod. But uh, if Ogre survives, we can have the best of both worlds. And Braids, that's fine. And Ashnod attacks. So, if they stayed back with Ashnot, what I could have done is play my commander and then Firebrand prevents the 1-1s from blocking and double Ogre triggers, takes care of Braids. Now we'll just take one. And uh, opponents can draw. So yeah, we'll kill Braids while we can. So it's going to deal 1 damage and then 2 damage. The intensity triggers are kind of interesting to put on the stack, so you have to be very careful. Especially if you target different creatures with them. Since the one you target first is the second one to resolve, so it deals more damage. A voice Rider, that's fine. Yeah, if our opponent cannot answer the Ogre, it's going to keep mowing down the team. National attacks. Can sack the goat to make a power stone token, but it does not. Is it time for Hellrider? Or Captain Landry make two treasures? Although I don't have any three drops to cast, so yeah, let's Hellrider. And then let's see here. Can prevent the goat and Ashnot from blocking. 
and then can target the opponents and then targets a ghost rider to take that out. Bunch of hell rider triggers. So haven't done the math, but this should be close to lethal. And our next Ogre trigger deals 4 damage. And there we have it, yeah, at turn 3, unanswered to Bellows Breath can take over a game very quickly. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing 5 color Kenrith. Missing some early pressure here, but at least Rampage can also answer a ramp artifact from the opponent, and then Squee, hopefully into Hoarding Ogre, is not a bad sequence. Thalia is also excellent in this matchup. Makes a Rampage more expensive, but uh, probably affects the opponent more than it affects us. Play Squee, and hope to draw an untapped land for next turn. A good aggro start. Spring Bloom Druid will get in the way. Not a big deal. So I guess we'll play our commander if we don't draw land. Otherwise, I still like Ogre first. Alright, land is good, so let's attack, play Ogre. Opponent likely to trade for a goblin. Which also makes our rampage more effective as the opponent doesn't have a small creature to sacrifice. And with a Thalia in play, I guess they could still have a 4-mana Sweeper, but I'm less afraid of them. Day of Judgment, yep, yeah, should have known. Well, we can follow up with a Haste Creature at least. Bones down to 7. Bowman Courier, another Haste Threats, <laughs> another Sweeper. Yeah, just need to have a bit of pressure in play and then have them play their commander, which we can answer. Ooh, Hellrider, that's gonna be worth it. Hits for four. And goodbye, Scorch Spitter. If they kill Hellrider, can we get back Squee? I think so. And there's another Wrath. Well, Bowman Courier plus Squee will get the job done. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the first sliver, so five color slivers in our hands. Got a bit of removal, no early pressure is not ideal, but we can maybe go over the top with Goldspan Dragon, so I'll try it. And then Triumph first. Okay, maybe Scry with Crossroads. And I uh, don't think it matters too much which color we name. Adeline, I'll definitely keep. So we can bolt a 2-drop and then play Adeline on 3. And then next turn, double its trigger. Still have bolt available. Opponent explores to ramp. Okay. Not gonna mess around here. Play this untapped. Two tokens, so Adeline hits for four, six total. And next round gold span's gonna be pretty epic. Key to the archive for ramp, so next turn our opponent gets to go off. Maybe even find a Day of Judgment from the spellbook. I think I still jam Goldspan and make a bunch of treasure. Opponent got rid of a Lightning Bolt, so they probably got that from the spellbook and kept the rest of their hand. Now they could still have Sweepers in hand, of course. Has that Marshal. Yeah, I think Goldspan's still the way to go. 
don't think it's quite lethal, but should put the point pretty low. Alright, I guess a lightning bolt will do it. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play facing Urza, Lord Protector, so a more controlling blue-white build. My hand's kind of on the slow side, and I guess with Pegasus I can at least give Squee Flying, but the token still will run into Urza. Eventually Gold Span into Itali is nice, but I would much prefer a lower curve. Yeah, that being said, we have all three colors, so maybe it's still a keep. And then we can scry with a crossroads on one, naming red, since we'll need double red. And Conquistador, I guess I can keep now. Gives me something to play on turn two, even if it's not a two drop. Bone's got a spell bomb, so that's relevant interaction for sure. So Squee vs Pegasus is an interesting question. I guess I'll attack and play Pegasus since Squee's not going to have a great time attacking past Urza. Opponent does fire off Spellbomb end of turn. Okay means they may not be able to target Dragon, at least. And then now replay Pegasus and play Line and Pass. Resolving Gold Span is going to be tricky. Well, their opponent doesn't seem to have too many counter spells up. Goes for a key to the archive. So next turn's gonna be quite scary as well. They did have a mystical dispute, but not great against the Mardu deck. Alright, gold span resolves, attack with the team. Conquistador flies. And next turn could be pretty fun. Ooh, Mightstone, our opponent actually found the Mightstone to meld with Urza. Well, that's definitely an achievement. So, I guess go for the Haste creature that hits the hardest now. As opposed to a Tally, which will get exiled by a melded Urza. And hope to find some relevant interaction. Bone falls to seven. Demonic Tutor is what they got of key to the archive. So, opponent could get all sorts of goodies, like maybe a portal to Phyrexia. Let's see, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, they can easily cast it. Supreme Verdict instead. That's surprising. Urza's dead, so it's going to be a while before they can meld again. So, don't think Supreme Verdict is necessarily what they searched up. But uh, I guess we'll start with Sentinel and then play Squee perhaps over Delina. Although Delina is tempting too. Could set up a fun turn on the following turn. And leaves a haste creature to maybe follow up another board wipe. There's Urza again, although no melding this turn. So what happens if I play my commander? Then I can trigger this twice, so that may already be lethal. Yeah, that seems worth a shot, and we can play Squee as well. Although they may have saved a counterspell for this disallow. Opponent pays. Alright, 
Let's uh, give Squee a try then. Move to combat. And smash. And the Lina can copy itself. And hope to roll high. Roll the one. Still get a copy, so your opponent blocks, and they should still take a lethal if they don't have interaction. Awesome. So, yeah, very close here against Urza. Surprised they didn't meld. Maybe no portal to Phyrexia to search up, which otherwise would have been pretty difficult to overcome. Alright, so we got to see our Mardu deck in action. Definitely a deck that benefits from curving out, although being a three-color deck sometimes makes it awkward with our opening hands since we don't always have the right colors of mana, and of course the more mana fixing we add at this point, the more tap lands we introduce in the deck, and the less likely we are to curve out with our one drops and two drops. So as we get more dual lands in the future, the mana base can only improve, which will improve the rest of the deck as well, but the power level, if you do get to curve out, is certainly there, since getting to double up on some triggers can be deadly. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.